Yeah. Schoolie, what's good with you, bro? What it do, what it do, man? Taking it easy. Congrats on the project, Sleeping Giant. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, man. It's been a journey. It's been a journey. It's been a while <laughs> since I dropped. I'm just happy to put out some work. Yeah, we pleasure, pleasure to have some good music coming back from you, bro. Um, tell me, how you feeling about it? Real good. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, more so ready to just keep the consistency going. So, with that being said, like I'm ready to drop the next project already. Like you hear me? Like not tired of this music or nothing. I'm just saying I need to put a lot of music out. I have a lot of music, you know. So, um, most of the time, I'm I'm excited about just what I got going on, mm -hmm. just because I'm doing. It. You hear me? Yeah. So, you know, and I'm grateful too. By the way, just to still be able to be someone that someone looks up to or even listens to still. You know, it's been I've been in the game for a minute. Damn near twenty years, you feel me? And I ain't thirty. <laughs> twenty eight, you feel me? Shit crazy. Yeah. It's crazy, man. You've been in the game for a minute. It's been a while since you dropped, but it, it is great that you're still here and that we're able to get some good music. Um, How long have you actually been working on this album, or since you said you had a lot of music already, did you just pull some songs together? Yeah, uh, I would say this album alone, Sleeping Giant, uh, I would give it a year. I would give it like eight months, nine months, maybe a year. I might maybe maybe give it a year. I ain't gonna lie. I've been working on it. Like I was saying, I got other music I was working on before that and the same time as this, uh, for SB's world right after this. You hear me? So I'm just I'm just working, man. Mm. So tell me a little bit. How was it um working with Troy Taylor on this album? Challenging, uh he challenged me. He challenged. He made me challenge myself. Uh, I challenged my voice. Took it to an extent where I didn't know I could. Um, I'm not really good with people telling me what to do in the studio because of how I grew up. I just knew what I was doing, you know. Um, but there's nothing wrong with listening to people sometimes. And he's like one of the only people that can say. Schooly listened to me in the studio when I told him, like we redoing songs literally, like we redoing uh, verses or parts to a song fifty times, like and that fifty is not it. You got to do two more times because I know you got it in you. That's Troy. So you know, shout out to Troy Taylor. Um, I appreciate you. He like a mentor, big brother, uncle, whatever you want to call. Him, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> You know, he, 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 he really about his business. He was really about his work. And I, I kind of had fun in all our sessions. Just after, like, after the first one, after he did, like, challenged me like that. And I'm like, that's crazy. But the song came out. I'm sounding so different, bro. Like, that's me. Like, yes, that's what I'm talking about. So when he said that, it was just. The rest of the sessions, I was just ready, mm -hmm. like just to know, like just to figure out what's gonna come out at the end, like what we gonna make. And boy, we made some, hey, we made some music. Boy. Yeah, I would say y'all definitely made some good music. How about that magical? I know you were saying that you felt like you were being pushed. I felt like that was a track exactly that you were talking about. You want to break that down some more? That was actually the first track that we did. That I was telling you, like when when it came out, I'm like, that's me. He's like. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Magical, uh, that was an experience, man. That's what opened the door to me and his world, me and Troy's world. Uh, he got me like, I feel like it's a distinctive sound. Mm -hmm. Like a new distinctive sound for me, especially. Um, basically, it's hard to explain it. It's, it was, it was fun. It was challenging. Uh, I did it over about 116 times <laughs> uh, until I got it right. Um, and that kind of like just 
made me tell like my management like Boy, we got to keep working with him mm-hmm. like that's it i ain't gonna lie that's it because we had worked before mm-hmm. like on one of my other albums one of my earlier albums before this uh, it probably was two albums before this um and he had i'm lit on there mm-hmm. uh so we already had like you know experience with each other working so it was kind of easy but hard. I don't know how to explain it. It was, it was kind of easy to work with him, and then it was just like, this is new for me. Somebody like telling me to do this over and over 50 times in a row, like, no, that's not it. Mm-mm, no, that's not it. Mm-mm, I'm hearing, mm, it doesn't sound like schoolie to me. Uh, uh-uh, that's not schoolie. Like you're not giving schoolie. Uh, uh-uh. <laughs> like back to back. I'm like, bro, huh? All right, come on, let's try. To, like, and I'm just, you know, going mm-hmm. with the flow, and it, it, that's how it worked. So basically it was it was challenging but I enjoyed it because it I made such a beautiful song. I think so too. It gave me it gave me a real nostalgic vibe just listening to it. Kind of took me back to like, you know, that early to mid 2000s time mm-hmm. when I was still like, you know, high school and everything like that just having fun, you know? And I really appreciate that track definitely. I think you guys did your thing on that. I appreciate it. Um even to kind of stay in that pocket and you know just keep going down that realm. How about that? Please me. How is that? Whew. Please me. Um, I would say please me was third. The third song we did. Mm-hmm. Um, please me was was ju- was fun and bouncy for me. Like it was like one of them. You know, oh, I can talk my I can talk my stuff on here. You feel me? Yeah. Um, I can pop it on here, like I can dance all around his around his beat, you know, these words. Um and it was more so of when we got the rhythm, we was trying to figure out what we was what the words are actually gonna be mm-hmm. with that rhythm that, that was that we had, um, for please me. But as for that one too, it came out different for me. Um that was one I felt like I was more in control of when when I did it, you know, like <laughs> not like listening for him to tell me that's it. Like yeah. I was kind of like more in control of that one. Like I went in there and it was done. Word. You know, uh, it was a couple of them I did with Troy that I, I went and did like that. And he was like, okay, you, you definitely know you can rap. You know, I know you can rap. I'm talking about the singing, mm-hmm. you know, you know, like, so it's just, it was challenging. Yeah, I like to do both. I don't like to just stick to one side, you know? Yeah. I appreciate that R&B schoolie pocket for sure. So what's next for you? Um, it's a lot of year left to drop some music, get some video going, everything like that. So what you say will, com- will be coming up next for you? Uh, like I said, man, I'm trying to keep the consistency because I feel like I have a, I have a history. Me, myself, I have a history of dropping and waiting or a minute in between time and then dropping. And I really don't enjoy it or like that, you know, so I'm trying to build, not build, just start just a new, I got a new path, I got a new thing going, like it's consistency. Um, I already had a longevity, I just need to keep coming, keep putting out work, I don't need to pause so much in my, in my career. And I feel like that's, that's probably what's gonna get me over the top. Yeah. Just that consistency, like, oh, he, he working, he wanna, he want this. I don't know. That's just sort of how I feel about it. Uh, so I'm trying to drop SB's world right after that, West Side Legend right after that. Like, I'm, I got videos galore, I got songs. Like, music is not the problem mm-hmm. when it comes to me. I'm talking two, three, four hard drives. That was from like the last two, three years. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's more for the years behind that game. Like stuff that hasn't came out. You know, like I've been yeah. solo since 2015. It's 2023. I got music, bro, and I'm talking about my music is timeless. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it doesn't age. Like my music just goes with. Like, whatever goes on, and I feel like that's why it doesn't age, because I, I kind of, my music, I kind of just, you know, I take everything from what I see visually 
uh, how I feel emotionally, physically, whatever, like uh, something I go through, like I take all that and make my music. Like, my is the creative process is so like uh, complex. <laughs> I would give it that word. Like the, my creative process is so complex, I couldn't explain it. Yeah, because I I got I could be happy on some on some just got some money happy like happy and I'm gonna go make a certain kind of music. Then something could happen or some or anything like something bad or just anything happened just not in my favor like and it got me going through it. I mean my feelings. I would go make another version of music like. But it's different people like inside of my core fan. It's different people that like this right here more than like people that like this right here more like people like some people love the pain. When I'm when I'm coming with pain, but then some people like when I'm when I'm bouncing, I'm, I sound happy, like I sound like I'm like pop off. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like I sound like, oh yeah, he he's smiling while he recording, like yeah. you know. And then you got that 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 packing eight punches, but he 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 on some wings, like he low, mm -hmm. he, you know. So I don't know. I got different ways of coming. Like I said, the creative process is just so complex man yeah. but i got a lot of music and it's time to drop it so i just like i said i'm going to stay consistent and that's my my new mode for schooly school is going to stay consistent i owe you guys you don't owe me i owe you guys so i'm going to keep giving up me that's dope and i think like as a listener we appreciate when artists put out consistently because yeah. it shows like hunger you know mm -hmm. and like we appreciate that hunger and that music as well who were some of the people that you listened to when you were coming up uh tip Lil wayne Ludacris used to be tripping. <laughs> um, CeeLo, Outkast, Andre 3000. Um, Anita Baker, Kilo Ali, um, Chris Brown. But I've been a lot of errors. Mm -hmm. But I love music, period. You get what I'm saying? So I grew up in an all woman household. I'm the baby, too. So, you know, I'm waking up to the smell of breakfast being cooked, the sound of the, uh, the sound of the, 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 um, vacuum cleaner on whoever cleaning up and music going, mm -hmm. old school music going. That's how you get woke up in the house when I how I grew up. Boom. But you gonna eat and it's gonna be clean when you wake up. <laughs> but that's how you wake up. And just, you know, from daddy to mama, auntie, grandma, their choice of music. You get what I'm saying? Cause they're from another time. Their choice of music stuck on us. Just me just being young, it, it stuck on me. I, I know this by heart, like when somebody else play it somewhere else because my mom and them playing it out. Mm -hmm. My auntie them playing it out, like they drinking beer, like they, they got a whole little thing going on. We don't even got to go out the house. This is how we do every day, like. Yeah. And you know, I'm just around this. I'm here, so I know all type of old school music and that's kind of like where I kind of get my, cause I be want to bring that feeling back sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was a different feeling back then. I wasn't even here, but I just feel like it was a different feeling. You feel me? I would agree to that for sure. Like, that's, I don't know, I just be want to bring the 80s, 70s, whatever, like 60s music. Just, bro, if I can mix myself right now with that, it would be crazy. Legendary <laughs> music like, like the music is already. I agree. Um, what does hip hop mean to you? Hip hop. Uh, hip hop means the world to me, I guess. Um, 
Because no matter what, however you put your genres or you classify your, uh, your genres, it's, it's all gonna fall in, back into hip hop to me. Um, I look at hip hop as one of the greatest chances that I won't even say black youth, but I want to say that, but um, for the culture, um, like one of those biggest chances you get to show what you are or show what you're made of, uh, I think hip hop kind of like, you know, like inches out like opportunities or a chance for whoever, you know, you may have to go through the things before you finally get it, but ultimately they gave you a chance. They give they give you a chance in life. Uh, I'm talking about from even just not even knowing anybody yet. You just like in your head, I want to do this. I want to I want to do the hip hop because it's been so intriguing in your life. Like there's no way you just woke up one day and just said I want to do hip hop. No, you've been watching it. It's been, it's visually like it's in you. Like you see it if you want to do it. You know, and I just feel like it's one of the biggest opportunities in the world on earth. Um, especially right now, music is just in demand, more and more crazy, but I just feel like it's it's a chance for people, man. Uh, grown people, young people, you know, uh, no matter the age to me, because I've seen people at 30 go, like they just started, you get what I'm saying? But they've been working before they was 30, all the way to 30, then they, yeah, so like, it's it's no age limit on it. Not like that. So, I just feel like it's one of the biggest opportunities in the world. And, you know, if that's what you want. That's dope. I really like that answer. And my last question for you is, what is your most memorable hip-hop moment? And that can be, like, anything, like your first show, like, either something personal, something that you've seen, like, Whatever it is, been around for a minute, so I know it's a lot to think about. It would have to be a. Uh, I went to this. I went to this club, and Nipsey was there, and you know, I'm, you know, I'm. I'm with Nip in the neighborhood. And I, I still hadn't met Nip. You get what I'm saying? So it was just, that alone was just, I got to meet Charlie. Like, that was just, for me, it was like, whoa. So, you know, I'm trying to be cool, boom. Shake his hand. Come on, cub. We in a club here in Atlanta. Oh, what up, cub, boom. You know how people introduce you. Boom. So, I'm standing, he on the table in the section, I'm standing, I'm standing next to the table in the section at this point. So it's kind of like, I know he don't know who I am yet. You get what I'm saying? He don't, cause how we just, how we just shook hands for him. But it's just, he shook my hand. I'm, that's what I'm grateful for already, just while I'm standing here. So I'm, just, I'm kicking, I'm from chill, do nothing crazy, I'm here. I'm right here with my boy. Boom. Wonder Why comes on. And when Wonder Why comes on in Atlanta, if you're from Atlanta, you know what the club doing. You know what the club gonna do. You know what the girls are gonna do. You know what the hood dudes gonna do. You know what not hood dudes gonna do. College kids, like. So when the song comes on, and everybody, you know, Everybody in the, in, the, in the session, like, they start, yeah, and, you know, they point at you, they know you, they know me. Everybody in the session know me, boom. But Nip in the session, you hear me? So everybody, yeah, i going to tell you, go to school. So while they doing that, he already, Nip is already like, like, he, he know this song already, so he like, when he see all them, like, point at me, I'm like, he like, huh, this your song? This your girl? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, no. Nah. He pulled me up on the table. I'm like, cuz, I 
I ain't know that was you, cuz. You know you're a legend in my hood, cuz. I love you. Like, bro, that kind of like broke me down. You feel me? And it was like, ever since that, that was my first time meeting my, probably, that was my first time meeting my, I had kicked it with him again after that before he, you know, he passed. Yeah. And it was, I was grateful for that, man. I was kind of mad that I didn't get more chances to see him. So that was like one of those real distinct moments in my life that I'm grateful for. I got to meet him and kick it with him and realize who I was to him. He didn't even know who he was to me though. Like, <laughs> he just didn't understand. Like, but, you know, long live Nip, man. Rest in peace, Nip.